This is the second video I'm doing on the uh, link uh, language integrated query system. And this is specifically on the link where clause. And to a large extent, this video came from my thinking about the previous video I did, where I said link is like a funny format SQL query. And I rearranged the clauses of the query to show how it was like an SQL query. And after having done that, I thought the main thing in an in a SQL select query is the, uh, the where clause. I mean, you're saying where this condition exists. And in fact, in that, the link I used for the specific uh, problem I wanted to solve in the video, there was no where clause. And another question that occurred to me is, can you dynamically change the link query as the program runs? Is it just something that it has to be set in stone, you know, and it's always the same? Or can you put variable information in the link, and then as the program runs, the link changes and re-executes? And I, I thought if that were the case, it would make it infinitely more useful. And in fact, you can do that. And in order to answer those questions, I wrote the three test programs I'm going to show in this video. And it shows that you can put variable information in a link query and change it dynamically as conditions in the program change. Well, the first program is essentially the same as the program in the previous video where we have uh, indeterminate variable size of ordered files, which is sort of like a, a query in uh, um, like MySQL or uh, TSQL. To be honest, I don't use TSQL and ADO.net much anymore. I mainly use PHP and MySQL. But essentially this has a field name in the from, which is actually referred to as the range variable in terms of uh, link. And then you have what amounts to an array of structs or an array of collections or a list of collections, basically something that's an array of data that's broken into parts. So it's like a table. It's like the rows in a table with the fields breaking each of the row into subparts. Uh, it's uh, often referred to as rows and columns or as records and fields in terms of MySQL tables. If we look at a PHP example, just in order to be comprehensive, I show the MySQL connect, which connects you to the uh, server that the MySQL server you're using to hold all the data, which may have multiple databases. And then you have a MySQL select DB that selects the actual database that's implicitly used in all the uh, queries and other types of uh, MySQL statement that's in the rest of the program. And then we set a string that is the actual query to be executed. And this is from a query I have in a PHP program, but I greatly edited it down to be simple for this video. In the original query, it had all kinds of joins and subqueries and whatnots in it. But in this, I just say select movie name, which is the field from movies, which is the table that we want to look at. The table, once again, is broken down into rows and columns or records and fields just like an array of collections. You have array elements and then the collection is broken down into different attributes. So essentially the same idea of a data structure. And then you have the where clause, which in this case takes a field uh, date watched and say, is it, if it's not null, then select that record. And then we have the ordered by clause which is on the same field, date watched and descending. 
Then we pass this uh, query to a MySQL query function, which is a PHP function that interfaces with MySQL. And the, as you see, the query is a string that's passed to it. And then we get a result back. And this result is usually referred to as a result uh, table because it's a collection of rows with the, the, the containing columns. And it, if this gets actual data back, then we have a resource we can go through with the while clause and using the MySQL fetched array, which fetches each of the members in turn. And if you use the MySQL associate uh, parameter on this call, it allows you to use the symbolic names like uh, movie name and the returned row. You know, you get a number of rows each in turn as you go through the loop. And if you use uh, MySQL num, you can use like a row zero, and row one to get the different columns by their number. And you can also have a MySQL both which you can use either numbers or uh, the associated names. So if we look at just the query without all the associated PHP, we're basically saying select movie names, the field from movies, the table, where date watched is not null. And this could be any kind of condition. You know, a student score is less than 90 or whatever and then say order by at some field descending and you can have several fields so it'd be this field and this field within that field and so on. The equivalent code in uh, uh, link we have a file info file names where it does a git files so we have an array of file info and file info of course has a number of attributes associated with like name, you know, path, uh, length, and so on. And the, we use an indeterminate variable which then becomes of type uh, file info because it's the same type as the, uh, the associated variable. And here we say from and we get what's called a range variable which is the same as a result table in a way. And then we have order by, and we use the column name or the attribute name of file name dot length and then ascending. And then we say select file name. And as I said, this is more or less a funny ordered query. Basically the select should be up here, then there should be the from, then there should be the order by. And we don't have a where clause because this is like the original code. And so we get our uh, result table uh, and basically iterate through it with a for each, which is the equivalent of the while and the uh, MySQL fetch array. And it's the receiving variable for this is a type file info because the collection array we're using is file info. And then we say n and then you use the n determinant variable of the query, the link query, to uh, say the collection, the result table collection. And then in this code we're just using a uh, list box items add to uh, show the uh, file info name attribute and the file info length attribute which is in a two string with uh, zero comma zero so it's every three digits is nicely uh, separated by a zero and when you press on the uh, order by uh, event handler of the, the uh, button we essentially have a uh, file dialog that allows us to select a directory and then we put the selected path which is another field in file info into uh, the directory uh, text box and then we call the routine we've just been looking at. So if we look at the form it looks like the 
text box of the that contains the directory and then the list box that contains the results of the link query. And if we compile and run this, go down and uh, say select this field. We'll see we get a number of uh, different files of a number of different types and the smallest one is first. It's the 13,000 bytes, 14,000 next, 28,000 next, and so on, all the way down to uh, 6 meg, almost 7 meg file. Well, the second program in this series is essentially identical, but now we put in a where clause. We say where file length is less than max size. And max size is just a parameter that gets passed to, uh, actually it's not even a parameter, it's just a variable that gets set arbitrarily to 100,000. So it's saying, do the same thing we did previously, but only select uh, file names where the length it, of the file is less than 100,000. So if we uh, save this, not sure why we have to save it, compile and run it, and do an order by size and go to the same directory, because it would be a little confusing if we didn't. <laughs> and now we see we get a much smaller list because we only get the files that are less than 100,000 because of the WHERE clause in the, the link. Well, with the third program, we get quite a bit more jazzy. We once again have the text box that contains the uh, directory we selected in the folder uh, browser dialog. And then we have the available space, this time in a text box, so we can change it if we want. But it's uh, initially set to 100,000 the same way. And then this list box is the same as the list box we've been looking at before. It shows all the uh, files that are smaller than the specified length. But in this case, we want to take uh, the files and say, what files can we put into that size? So essentially the algorithm is, find the biggest file we can fit into a uh, hundred thousand out of all the files that are listed uh, from the directory we've selected and then find the next biggest one and then the next biggest one until we have the best possible fit in terms of descending sizes and I essentially set up this program to show that you can interact programmatically with the link query so if we look at the code, you see in the second uh, function, which is files that will fit, we basically have the same query where we say uh, file name dot length is less than space available. But as we go through the uh, for each, which is selecting uh, the files of that length, we set in turn curve file name and curve file size so that basically when we get to the end of the for each these are going to be the biggest possible file we can fit into that size and then what we do is subtract that size of that file from the space available and then go back again and check if we're done if we're not done we re execute the query again with the reduced space available, you know, now we have a, we already have a file in the group that is of a certain length, so we don't, we can't use that space, it's taken up by the file. So space available gets increasingly smaller as the, the while loop executes. And if we uh, run this program, and select a file with the folder browser dialog same one of course 
and this shows all the uh, files that are less than that size but then it says we can fit this into the hundred thousand and then we can fit this into hundred thousand but then we don't have enough space to fit the next smallest one in the hundred thousand the smallest one is thirteen thousand and the space we have left is nine thousand so essentially we can sit, fit these two files into that space based on this algorithm we just ran with the shrinking space available and the dynamically changing link specification. Well, this answered the second question of can you dynamically change a link to achieve some result in the program? And that makes link infinitely more useful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.